from Magoosh. We're back here for GMAT Tuesdays. Uh, we're going to go over absolute phrases today. Um, and this was a, the reason we're going over this is because it was inspired uh, by a question that a student had on our blog. Um, and so we're just going to talk about what it is and then how it relates to the GMAT. Um, so we'll dive right in with just what a absolute phrase is basically a special noun phrase. So if you know what a noun phrase is, then you know what an absolute phrase is. The only real difference between normal noun phrases and an absolute phrase is this part here. It modifies the entire sentence. So with a noun phrase, you know that it usually just modifies uh, a word that's right next to the phrase. And usually when you are doing sentence correction on the GMAT, and you find that there's a modification error, you're moving the phrase next to the word that it modifies. With an absolute phrase, it's a little bit different um, it, because it modifies the entire sentence. Now, it gives uh, context to the sentence. It gives description or detail um, to what's going on in the sentence. And I want to note, too, that this is something that's not really used when people speak. Um, it's something that's primarily used in writing, oftentimes in narrative writing, because it can be very descriptive. Um, and so the basic structure here is that you have a noun at the beginning, plus words that aren't verbs. Not anything complicated. Noun at the beginning, words that aren't verbs. Um, and actually, this is a good point, too. You can take an absolute phrase and make it into a sentence or an independent clause if you add a verb to it. Um, and so I have some examples over here. Um, the first example is about Yosemite Valley, a very nice place. It says, the vaulted granite walls of Yosemite Valley dwarf the visitors, a line of Goliaths from another time and place. And so our noun, or excuse me, our absolute phrase is here at the end. It begins after the comma. And you'll notice here that it starts with a noun, a line. And then we have a bunch of words and stuff, words that aren't verbs. And hopefully what you notice is that this phrase is not describing visitors here. It's talking about these vaulted granite walls of Yosemite. And so it's giving detail and adding description to the sentence as a whole instead of telling us about a specific word in the sentence. Our next example comes from the United States Constitution. It is the Second Amendment. And it is, it has one long absolute phrase at the very beginning. Um, and it begins, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of the state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And so this whole part here, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of the state is all an absolute phrase that's giving us context for this idea here, that the rights of the people to keep and bear arms should not be infringed. And so it's almost a reason for why they should not be infringed. So those are two examples. There's a lot more out there. If you're reading a novel, you can look out for them because they definitely pop up a lot um, in narrative writing, as I said. And then finally, why is this important? What do we need to know for the GMAT specifically? Well, we'll come back over here for GMAT sentence correction questions. So sort of two things to think about. One, if you can't form a proper phrase from a sentence, so you know you have a modifying phrase error, there, you see there's phrases in the sentence, and you're having trouble finding an answer choice that creates a, what you would think is a proper phrase, Think about absolute phrases. The sentence might be testing your knowledge of absolute phrases, and so you just want to keep that in the back of your mind when you see a sentence with a lot of modifying phrases in it, especially when they come either at the end of the sentence or at the beginning. And then finally, uh, another quick tip is to look out for absolute phrases that begin with with. This is um, colloquial expressions we'll use with uh, at the beginning of absolute phrases, but in formal writing and on the GMAT, they don't like it. So make sure to avoid answer choices that have an absolute phrase beginning with with. All right, that's all I have for absolute phrases. If you have questions at all, feel free to put a question 
in the comments below the video. Also, I'll put a link down there to, uh, to an article so you can read more about absolute phrases, and there are some practice problems too there. Um, and if you need anything else GMAT related, head over to Magoosh. Be excellent.